I'm about to become an offender, Ricky. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. <laughs> Weird. All right. Well, enjoy that disadvantage. Welcome to the Vale, a rare bastion of civilization in a world recuperating after a terrible centuries-long war. Though the battles ended 200 years ago, the land still recovers from this period of tumultuous strife and slavery. Join now the defenders of the Vale, as they navigate a world riddled with opportunity and tragedy, all the while seeking glory, gold, and adventure. I don't know if you guys remember, we're playing D&D D &D together. Uh, we've been doing it a while. We're having dinner right now with the remaining leaders of the cult, because you guys like snacks. Look at you, Mal. We do like snacks. We had a conversation. We had some people show up. Basil's got a daddy and a mummy. Rabbi Jan has one cool cat father. <laughs> cat dad. When we had left off in this in this room, uh, Rabbi Jan, in the middle of a, a personal crisis of identity and morality had reached out and petitioned Freya to answer a couple of questions. So, as you'd kind of stepped away and knelt down, you'd, you'd prayed and petitioned Freya using that silly cleric ability, right? Yes, that silly speak to gods cleric ability. You know, that Does silly that one. Oh. Not well, just singular, like all the gods. Whichever one I want. Nope. Nope. <laughs> No, you don't just get to petition all of the gods and goddesses. Boom. <laughs> Even the bad ones. <laughs> uh, hey, Bahamut, I know we don't really hang out that often, but I've got questions. Yeah. Oh, I would what have questions for Bahamut. him. I always forget that we named your special ability, oh shit. Yes, you did. <laughs> As you seriously kneel down and, and you, you, you petition Freya, you've got all of your, your holy items kind of up and you're freaking out and your little palms are sweaty. You just say mom spaghetti, right? Like you just said, you're having a rough time. And uh, uh, you hear what sounds kind of like a, a rush of wind outside of the outside of the place. And the doors to the hall where Ren is standing open up dramatically. Ren gets kachewed across the floor here. It's like on his way back in, he just gets... <laughs> you just hear... Ee! And the door comes in a four-legged feline. It looks like the tiger from uh, Ice Age. I don't know. It, looks like it did from a distance. Maybe not. Diego? Yeah. Like, no. This, this... It did from a distance. Incorrect. Basil, you're in timeout. <laughs> there, you're in the corner. Do I what? <laughs> Flick me across the room. This feline comes comes strolling up to you and it, it circles around you. Kind of, you know, cats do that weird in between the legs figure eight thing when they're trying to knock you over and kill you. Everybody can see this cat coming in. And the cat comes over and it kind of flops like cats do on its side. And it's like looking at you like, pet me asshole. So the cat the cat keeps looking at you expectantly. Rabbi John's going to go, hello, can Rabbi John help you? He yells at you loudly. Saying, I am your sister. Rabbi John is going to kind of awkwardly bend down and scratch the cat between its, in its, its ear and its chin. The little area that they really like. You hear a good purr, and then the cat drops some runes on the ground. It gets up, figures eight your legs, figure eight your legs again, and hopes that you'll you'll fall down and die. Walks out on the way by, it knocks something off a table, and the runes form a couple of statements that I'm gonna whisper you. Okay. To set it up, you see Rabbi Jan goes out. And this is what happened in the last couple of moments of the thing. Rabbi Jan's frustrated with the conversation. She steps back. She goes down. She kneels. You guys hear her kind of praying like she does sometimes. A cat explodes in the room. Ren's catapulted across. By the way, not only was he catapulted across the room, he was catapulted by a cat. All right? Catapulted. He was ca He was literally catapulted across the room. So a tiny two-hit-point cat knocked him across the room. Just putting that out there. And then you see the cat come over, try to trip Rabbi Dan to death, uh, gets some head scratches, and it drops some room. Rabbi Jan reads the runes, furrows her brows, and complains about the third set of runes for some reason. Okay, so for everybody in the party... And all of our wonderful listeners, I will now read the results and answers from Freya. Okay, so Rabbi John's first question was, is Abjura really her father? And Freya 
came back and said, The results for your paternity test came in, and Abjura is your father. So the second question that Robbie John asked was, did the cult get what they deserved? Did they deserve what they got? And the second answer of Freya's was, How dare you doubt Freya's guidance? Were you not instructed by the will of Freya to combat their evil? She's a little upset, I think. The third question that Robbie John asked had to do with, is Mr. Abel Geyser using the guild for his evil gains? And uh, Lady Freya came back with this clear as a bell answer. Abel is the incomprehensible one. His will is his own. Sometimes good, sometimes evil. Concepts he seems to have no understanding of. Fidelius, you've been kind of, you've been quieter, which is normal for you. During this whole conversation and dinner, what are you thinking? Oh, yeah, I, I haven't heard anything surprising yet, so I'm just waiting and watching, specifically the bad guys. So when you say the bad guys, do you mean the defenders? Okay. Obviously not. I was just making sure, because there seems to be some confusion, some moral issues. There is there is no confusion in Fenelius' sphere. All right. What about you, Roland? You've been quiet as well. You've been snacking on some food. What's going on with you? Just eating good berries in the corner. This goes beyond just, like, the cult versus the defenders. This is something more personal between, you know, Basil and Robbie John and the people we're dealing with. So Roland is just kind of sitting back, taking things in, and just trying to be extra observant. Onyx, what about you, man? What's Onyx up to with this whole thing? He's not smart, but he's not oblivious. He knows killing's good, so everything's okay. (laughs) So as we're sitting there, uh, what do you do after you get your revelations? Do you go back and tell the the defenders what happened? I know you told us, but do you tell the defenders? Yeah, Robbie John would share that info with her friends. Where the other people can hear? No. I don't feel like all of those responses would be received well. So you guys step, I'm assuming you pull everybody to the side and you let them know, and then you guys get back to what you're doing? Yes. But Basil's like, ah, do, do one second <laughs> to the to the to his family and to Abjura. So they they continue eating. You guys gather up. She reveals anything. She's just told you what she told you. You guys have any replies that you want to add into that? You guys have any insights you want to add to what your revelations were? To catch your dad. <laughs> that's that's what Lady Freya said. Anybody else before you go back into dialogue with these possibly good guys that you guys have been harassing as evil people? I'm sorry for you both. How would you like to handle this? Would, would you would you like our assistance? Would you like us to continue to observe? If it's all right, I would still like to think there's a way to handle this peacefully, and I would prefer not to fight these people. So a peace here and a peace there? <laughs> yes, peace would be nice. Perhaps there's still a way for us to explain why we believe we're in the right and they're in the wrong. Ravi Jean told us. They do follow a different god. It might be at least useful to try and understand why. Why they think following he who shall not be named is such a good idea. Just a little bit more patience is required and then hopefully things will be resolved. Is that acceptable? So you want me to go over there and tell them that we're in the right because Ravi Jean said so? Uh, well, 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 perhaps you could um, uh, 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 allow myself and Ravi Jean to converse with them, uh, continue to converse with them. Ravi Jean would like to point out that she didn't say so. She was just relaying information from the goddess Lady Freya, so, you know. You didn't say anything? About what? It sounded like you. What? It sounded like you told us that. Uh, Robbie John was telling you what Lady Freya said? The kitty cat is Lady Freya. Sure. (laughs) This this man is mighty enough to take a direct punch from a god and is confused about a kitty cat. (laughs) Freya could punch him in the throat and he would not die. But but he can't understand a kitty cat and a tabaxi difference. <laughs> Kit Kat. So, uh, Abjura 
sitting at the table, wipes his face after his plate's been emptied, and goes, Ah, I'm just so full and so happy and so busy. So, if your little club of uh, misfits and evildoers is going to arrest me on some mis- mystical Trump charges, I will be arrested now, yes, or Abjura will uh, continue his work. I thought I look at Ravijan to see how she reacts to what Abjura says. Ravijan wishes Mr. Abjura had a little more patience. Oh, but... you want you Ravijan wishes for more patience from Abjura. Ravijan, a part of the group who's wiped out an entire community that Abjura has tried to build up using evil necromantic magic. Okay, more patience after watching the gen- or the genocide of an entire community. Ravijan just asked her deity, Lady Freya, for a little bit of clarity and guidance. And she feels like she has enough information. Robbie John is related to Mr. Abjura. Abjura is not surprised by Robbie John's revelation. Abjura was already in the knowledge of who Abjura's family was, yes? That does not change the fact that Abjura's child has not been very grateful to being birthed. Abjura's child, Ravi Jan, has been a part of a group which has slaughtered many of Abjura's friends and potential family members for Ravi Jan. All these aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews that you would have, that Ravi Jan could have had a future with are now dead. But it's okay. I think Ravi Jan's friend brings them back from undeath and a skeleton so Ravi Jan maybe play with the friends all she wants. He says irritable as he sits back at his table. With all due respect, Mr. Abjura, I don't think you're being very fair. Oh, did, did Abjura say something not true? You word it as though we had no reason to do the things we've done. Also, you word it as Rabbi, though. Robbie oh, John didn't actually do these things. Just um, putting that out there. Okay, Robbie John. If Abjura's best friend, a necromancer, assaults a town, would Abjura be in trouble if Abjura didn't condemn actions like this? Mr. Abjura thinks Rabbi John did not condemn these actions because Mr. Abjura doesn't know enough to assume such things. Then Rabbi John has no say in Rabbi John's circle. Rabbi John is a, a captured slave puppet. Maybe Abjura should stage rescue. Maybe Abjura should shut up. <laughs> oh. Abjura hadn't considered not speaking in the defense of Abjura's people. Abjura apologizes for Abjura's audacity. Mr. Abjura should should probably hush now. <laughs> Is Abjura in danger of losing his community? Huh? You've taken Abjura's family. Even more painful was Abjura's family was taken by Abjura's family. Sure. What are you going to do? Hurt Abjura more? Robby John is considering it. Robby John has nothing that can hurt Abjura more. Do what you're going to do. Abjura is going to leave in just a couple of moments with uh, your permission, without your permission, whatever. Uh, Robby John is not going to do anything, but if he's leaving the room, she's just going to kind of squinty eyeball him. Basil is going to say, just understand, Abjura, we do not make decisions like the ones we've made lightly, and we do not make them without information that you are perhaps not privy to. We don't know what it is that makes you want to follow your god. I'm interested to know. I'm interested to know what could make people want to do the things that your community has done. Would you Abjura's explain? community, you, you come in on the tail end of a slaughter, eliminating everybody I know. That was awesome, wasn't it? After we received word that your necromancer destroyed the entire center of our, our budding empire, completely, you then raised Abjura's family from this budding empire and used them to assault us here. And then you make demands of Abjura, insinuating that Abjura's faith, which you don't know, is the fault for Abjura's people being destroyed. Okay, Crusader. Crusader, okay. There are, of course, things I do know about your faith, but you're correct. There are gaps in my understanding. I would be grateful if you could enlighten me, but I cannot imagine you're too interested in any sort of activity of the sort. I'm sorry. Abjura feels no obligation to talk to anybody uh, on the tail's end of a cult of, of a slaughter who was trained from a kidnapper of a stolen art. The only reason Abjura entertains this entire group is because Abjura's daughter is in this group and Abjura's best friend's son is in this group. Otherwise, there would be no civil discord. 
Probably John feels like that is a threat. Personally, I'm not an advocate for causing harm to people, but I do do it <laughs> a lot, obviously. Yeah, obviously. The fact of the matter is that there are a lot of people that will do harm unto others if they are not stopped. And it has been evidenced that whatever teachings your god has given you have given you and your people great cause to do harm unto others. What harm? Things done to Gry, the things done throughout the Vale. What things throughout magic. the Vale? You, you've heard one side of the story with Gry. We've given you another. Who says one side of the story is but more pertinent than the other? You gave me half a story. You gave us less than half. The more on the coattails of accusations and slaughter. I think of the two parties, abjuro has been the most polite. We know what's the end goal for this community, Abjura. Do you? What do you know? What end goal do you talk about? We've seen things. Visions. Visions given to you by whom? Not visions. Conversations. Reflections. Given by whom? Presented by Abel. Oh. Of course, Abjura is no friend of Abel's. Abel is not of this world, of this galaxy, of this dimension. Abel is something that is foreign here. Abel is something that is alien here. Abel only serves Abel. And Abjura refused to serve Abel. And Abel has been an enemy of Abjura ever since. I'm not asking you to serve him. I'm thinking that you understand why we do things you're, in the you're name justifying, of him. You're justifying the slaughter of my people based off of a theory from an alien. Who has never theory. proven himself with anything but stories. Lots of grand ideas and I hopes. I quite believe. But never any proof. I quite believe his actions prove the things he says. He what is actions? a very powerful being. Yes, we both, Abjur agrees with you completely. Very powerful. Godlike. If he wanted anything from us, he could take it. And yet he chooses to work with us in the name of aiding us. Abjur thinks that Abel is under constrictions. Explain. Abjur is still alive. Abel does not yes. like Abjura. If, if Abel was able to, Abel would ably kill Abjura. I believe that that was handed off to us to complete. Okay. Blood change is nothing. It just means you follow an enemy of our family, which is apparent by the murder and, you know, slaughter and whatnot. We don't follow Abel. We work with no. him to ensure the survival of this planet. But if, if, you, if you don't follow Abel, why did you heed his advice and commit this audacity? Atrocity. This audastic atrocity. You don't need to follow someone to understand the words they say. You can hear both sides of an argument and make a decision after the fact. Then Abel's argument was we were the big bad people going to do harm to everybody, evidenced by all the harm we've done. Abel's argument was that the being that spearheads your operations is far too dangerous to be allowed to complete his machinations. His argument was that if we didn't do anything, we'd be trapped in this cycle over and over again, and we have seen the results of that. Have you asked Abel about where he gets his information from the cult? Elaborate. Do you mean on its... I, I, I mean, happenings? when talking to Abel, have you asked him with your words where he gets his information about the cult, and he does the cult with the cult? He showed us thing, um, events. And where do you think Abel received knowledge of those events? Uh, perhaps being present, perhaps simply being privy to the knowledge of the universe. Present. Present is a very unique uh, situation, would not you think? Now, your biggest problem, and I apologize to the Stone King, was his, his home was wiped out by one of our, our, our fingers, correct? I believe so. And who aided you in rectifying that? What do you mean? You were aided in the endeavors to find Jethero. And somebody, somebody specifically aided you who was tied to an organization. Are you perhaps referring to Geisa Geisa? <laughs> yeah, still serving in the, in the organization today. One of its more prominent leaders now. Made lots of advances. His, his research can get very borderline. He's done some good things. He's also come a lot with a lot of medicinal uh, things. He's really advanced health potions. He's, he's figured out some surgeries for the non-magical doctrine. From what I understand, the following of Freya actually uses some of his new techniques. So then... What you're saying is the fact that he helped us is proof that not all of the cult... Oh, my apologies, that's a poor word to use. I know you don't like it. Not all of your organization is evil. Dang, you've come with accusations from somebody you don't comprehend. And you've just taken their word for it and followed them at a whim. 
He was locked in a cave. He was sealed away as an evil relic. And you strolled right in and just let it out. And then once you let it out, you just believed it. You just found something that was sealed in a cave and took it at its word. And now that has led you to murder innocent people. But that's somehow my fault. All because this guy who was locked in a cave, and by guy, I mean weird foreign being of immense power and aptitude that was locked in a cave told you, well, they're really the bad guys. You should handle them. I think the problem is you don't understand the argument you're trying to make. You're saying that Gaisa Gaisa is evidence enough that we shouldn't come at you with these sort of accusations. But I don't look at things like this in black and white. No, it's all I think all, that it's people all white can be you. wrong. And I think people can do bad things. And I think cosmic entities can be wrong and do bad things. You have to understand information as you're given it and make decisions based on what you know. Perfect. So you think that cosmic entities can be wrong. Then, with your own logic, Abel, your informant, could be wrong. But we all don't of your think actions, he is. All of your actions could be based off of wrong. Yes, but we don't think he is. We have Cause... evidence to believe he's not. Hey. We have the support of the metallic dragons, beings of immense good most of the time. So you're saying that they're good because of their color? Not quite. I'm saying that their behavior has been observably good in the past, and their intentions have been observably aligned with preserving life. Okay. Life, so innocence. Let's, let's review your limited knowledge of dragon kind. Why don't we? Dragons were sealed away as a part of some agreement. All of them. Uh, the metallic dragons were noble, and this was their idea to receive balance. The chromatic dragons were just locked away, and they came out pissed. And it's their fault. They were pissed and raging against the people who allied with the people who agreed to seal them away for all eternity. They were locked away for good reason. Everybody thinks they're good. So far, my side has been slaughtered, and your side believes in alien god and unjust uh, dragons who lock away others of their own kind. I do not believe it was unjust. Were I believe there? they made sacrifices. I don't need to be there to understand. That, that's true. But your perception is only taking one side. You've taken one side of information and without hesitation wholly endorsed the doctrine. And that doctrine has led to slaughter and murder. And you accuse me of illogical fallacies. It has not been without hesitation. We do all that we do in the name of protecting the veil. I don't think that one does that. And he points to Onyx. Right. Well, he's got his own kingdom, so he's kind of, you know. I think he just likes to fight. And there's nothing wrong with that. You keep doing that, sir. Just please don't fight my face. <laughs> I'm done. Are you going to try to lock us away, as your allies are so prone to do? Honestly, personally, I would rather have you come back to the Vale with us and talk in Santa Vale. Discuss with the leader of our guild about why you think you're so in the right. You want a chance to prove why you're correct. I don't, I don't need to do prove it. why I'm correct. I've proven my why I'm correct. You stand amidst the slaughter of, your, of the evidence of your own slaughter. You presented That's no all. evidence. You presented no debate besides somebody else told you so. That's it. I'm presenting you events that you participated in. Between the two I'm... of us, one of us is a little bit hopeful, and the other one is based on evidence and facts and current events. You're listening to the tales of people and beings which you cannot be hand to comprehend the scope of their power or existence, and they are filtering the, the filter. Or they are they are filtering the information into you exactly as they want you to see it. And you bought it hook, line, and sinker, and you're a puppet. And it's sad because you could be so much more. No, I'm if not going to willingly go to Center Vale and chat with some people who are aligned against me from the start. If you would like if to kidnap us, you refuse to give us, me proof. Are you not doing what you're accusing us of? Sure. What you want to go outside and look at the burning, you know, bodies of my people? We can ask them to come in. I've seen them very well. All the evidence I need to prove why you're wrong and I'm right is outside. When we look up among the bodies of women and children who couldn't even defend themselves. The one person in our, our organization who did that has been murdered, in part with the aid of somebody else from our organization at the behest of me. We actually had you guys correct that problem because you're heroes. That's what you do. It also offered one of your own revenge against the person who destroyed his family without our knowledge and our approval. As I've said before, we're interested in defending the veil. Yeah. We believe this settlement was an, an endangerment to the veil, so we acted accordingly. 
Yeah, and slaughtered. If you truly, truly, truly believe that the people that we trust cannot be trusted, it makes no sense as to why you will not prove those accusations to us. Uh, first of all, your statement's completely wrong. It's an ignorant statement. If we don't believe the people who are pushing you around aren't trustworthy, or if we did believe that they weren't trustworthy, you want us to go and submit ourselves to those untrustworthy people to try to prove our innocence. I have given that's, you the opportunity like, now, that's... and all you do is advocate about how much you want to leave and how much you don't want to listen to me. No, I pointed out the horrors you've committed without referencing ancient stories told by beings who could or could not be telling you the truth. I've just shown you what you guys have done, and you keep ignoring that like it's okay, and instead go, nah, this mystical being told me a different story, so it's probably good to believe it. Robbie John told me a story. Robbie John's probably a pretty good storyteller. Runs in Robbie John's family. So you believe Robbie John? I believe Robbie John believes she is right. Just like I believe this young one believes he is right. But beliefs in right and wrong do not make you right and wrong. Being right and wrong is being right and wrong. Just how you believe that you're right. I mean, I'm standing here It's a difficult discussion. It's it's pretty simple. I'm standing amongst all the dead people that I used to take care of with the people who participated in the killing. And we're standing amongst the remnants of a world that's been through this far too many times for its own good. Maybe. Uh, Maybe John didn't kill anybody here. Mm, That's right. No, but you accepted the aid of the person who did. That's, I mean, that's totally different, right? You didn't actually sh- blow the, blow him up with fireball. You just patted the guy who cast it on the back. Well, be careful when you pat him on the back because he hasn't been eaten right, and he's really frail now. That's right. That's right. That's the other funny thing. We get accused of being evil people as you consort with a lich and a death knight? He looks at the druid and goes, Surely that sets off your warning signs. Who told you that being a lich makes you evil? Experience? Life? Every lich we've ever ever run into in history has been evil? Ask the elves how they fared with their three encounters with liches that are documented. I believe, if my people told me right, you, and he points to Basil, were influenced by a lich like this, weren't you? I was influenced by someone who was evil, who happened to be a lich. Oh. It is oh. just as uh, informed to come to the conclusion that all liches would be evil, as it is just as ill-informed as you say, ill-informed as you say, as it is to come to the conclusion that all members of your organization are evil. I don't see a difference, I suppose. I see magic that is perhaps very dangerous, perhaps comes with a great cost, but I don't see evil. I see a tool that could be used for many bad things, and I see a tool that could be used for good things as well. Is that what everything is to you, tools to accomplish your goals? When it's magic, tools to do what must be done to protect people, keep people safe, maintain peace, remove threats as they become real. Abjura just puts his arm up and he goes, Abjura thinks Abjura's talking circles with one who's easily influenced by others, as proven by one's own life. Abjura's done. You can either arrest Abjura and Abjura's friends, who happen to be your parents, right, and complete this horrid act you've done here, or you can have a nice day. Either way, I'm getting up. There's a door behind me. I'm going to walk through it. We've not attacked you. We've not assaulted you. What are you going to do? And he stands up, and your your mother and father, they stand up, and they look at you. Basil, your parents in particular have tears in their eyes, and they start to head towards this back door. As they're going, I want to say, like, you really, neither of you will come with me to talk to the people that I trust. Willingly? No. We don't trust the same people you trust. I'm going to spend six key points and put a wall of stone up in front of the door. Then it's abduction to add to murder. I don't want to go for the kill. And I sort of look over my shoulder oh. at the rest of the defenders, and I say, I don't control them, though. Oh, good. So it's not only abduction, uh, 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 abduction tyrant, it's un- abduction under the threat of murder. If you'd like to look at it that way, very well. It but was. I'm not interested in letting you walk away when there are things that we still have to discuss. Oh, we're not going to talk to you, ever. That's unfortunate. So they'll come back. He reaches down to his, his untouched wine glass, and he says, uh, one last one last uh, salute, then. He wants to drink together. He's going to drink. Is there, is there a glass for me to drink? There are. There's all those cups around the table. But him and your two parents all pick up a cup. I reach for a cup, and as I do, I say, you know, if you come with us, I'll keep you safe. 
Uh, and then he drinks, all three of them drink the cup at the same time. I guess I'll take a sip. Are you immune to poison? I am, and so would my dad be, because he's a monk. Because the other two die. Yeah. And then your dad takes a dagger and commits uh, seppuku. Can I try and knock it out of his hand? Like stunning strike him or something? Give me a, uh, a dexterity check, and you gotta beat a 18. Uh, an athletic, we'll do acrobatic strike, I'm sorry, you just gotta beat an 18. Acrobatics? Mm-hmm. That should be easy for you. Beat like plus 45, yeah. 31. So you reach over and he's now struggling with you. He's trying to make the cut. The dagger's on his abdomen and he's trying to push it. I bonk him on the head with my halberd. <laughs> we want, yeah. Blunt. So you guys, you guys eyes. will subdue him. Yeah. You know, disarming him. Uh, as Basil's mom and Rabbi Jen's father have now fallen dead. And Basil's father is struggling, trying to kill himself as he gets subdued and tied up. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, yeah Basil just sort of um, looks at Robijan. And he uh, he looks back at the two bodies, and he just... Ravijan, I'm very sorry. Ravijan did not know that being. Ravijan has not lost anything today. I'm glad. Ravijan feels like maybe we should take all three of these persons back to the guild, place them in individual cells, and perhaps casts. A resurrection of sorts. Oh, guys, Finn just put in chat that he awkwardly pats Ravijan on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my heart. Ravijan, resurrections don't work if they don't want to come back. And we still, of course, have questions for Julius. I still think we take them with us. Ravijan agrees. Ravijan is going to pat Finn's hand as it's on her shoulder in a way of saying it's okay. Alright, so Rabbi Jan and Basil, mm -hmm. you guys have inspiration for this interaction. Oh, heck yeah. Nobody touch a hit point, nobody touch a spell slot, or I will delete you. Get a load of these idiots arguing about morality with the bad guys. That's something you should do. Hey, look at me. I'm a bad guy. You're a good guy. We're all assholes, okay? Check us out. Defenders Veil. We're on Twitter and Facebook. Take your carcass over to Apple Music or Spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts and engage. Give us some good ratings. Don't be a jackrabbit. And now we're going to get back to these chuckleheads while I try to figure out who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. Hopefully they figure it out. Rabbi Jan needs a nap and a snack or she's going to be confused for the rest of the episode. Back out. We're all here. Uh, there's a wall of stone and you guys have tied up a monk who is now not fighting with you. He complacently did it. Uh, the two dead bodies are there. What are you doing? Okay. Onyx, do you think you could carry clear and abjure if that's all right and then mm -hmm. i because I, I have the belt that onyx gave me thanks onyx by the way thumbs up i'm gonna sling that old papa over my shoulder you guys Come have on, anything off these bodies before i uh throw them over my shoulder you find a plus one hand axe oh. on cleo you find two spell scrolls a detect poison and disease and a magic mouth spell scrolls she should have used the detect poison spell. No, Cleo. <laughs> Cleo, no. <Cleo>. The condensation. <laughs> Bobby John feels like they probably knew there was something extra in the Kool-Aid before they no. decided to slam it back. No, she's yeah. blindsided. So you found a Wand of Web. And the Wand of Web has the bonus ability. It can conjure parchment upon command. It can what? It can create paper. It's a printer. What? But not a, it's just Why? blank pages. Why would a wand of web be able to do that? Why wouldn't it stop complaining, all right? I just because think that's really interesting. Mages need paper all the time. And then we have a wand of magic missiles. Oh, that is good, actually. That is very good. And this wand of magic missiles, if somebody with a good arcana wants to give me an arcana check. Let me get I notes. will. <laughs> I don't know if we know anybody in the group with a high arcana. Oh, oh Grok's not okay. here. Shame. Oh man, I didn't roll a one. I was hoping to get a zero. Thirty-two Arcana from Phanelius because oh he's like, everything about him is a cheater. 
you notice that this heavy wand, it's a heavier wand than normal, it's an exceptional wand of magic missiles, was created by Freya for an, it's, it's a wand of mis- magic missiles that's in stories that you, you, you've heard created specifically by Freya for one of her one of her Viking followers back in the day. Just hopping himself on one of those boats that rides up rivers and raids towns. But this is this is a special wand of magic missiles. Ooh. And the I way that works is when you Mike. when you go to attack, if you when you go to cast it, you roll a percentile dice. And if you're above fifty, you add an extra two D or an extra like you cast it up a level. Oh, that's fun. And if you roll below fifty, it just cast regular. That's cool. I actually quite like the Wand of Magic myself. It's quite a nice little item. You got three potions. One was a potion of animal friendship. Ooh. That was the number one. Number eight is a potion of healing. Sixteen, you see a sea of a liquid contained in iron flask sealed with wax. A potion of supreme healing. You looted the dead family members. Onyx is picking up both of them and going to carry them. Let's yeah, see. I slinged that over my shoulder. Are you guys going to check this town out at all? Well, I want to look behind the door. Oh, yeah, I stopped concentrating on Wall of Stone. <laughs> uh, so it collapses. Uh, <laughs> First, I will suggest perhaps seeing what was behind the door in case there's anything interesting. We should, I mean, we might as well ask Gry to call off the attack because we pretty much, I mean, we have the leader, remaining leader, a pat down on them. Well, there's no attack. You just make it to your okay. Oh, well, I meant the default attack. I meant Gry as well. What do you think? Looking around the room. To Gry? He's not in the room. He's outside. No, oh, not to Gry. To, to the defenders, Ricky. Well, I guess Gry is a defender. These wow. defenders. I'm about to become an offender, Ricky. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. <laughs> Weird. All right. Well, enjoy that disadvantage. <laughs> I'm carrying you know these guys, guys and following you along. Yes, this is your endeavor, after all. I do appreciate your allowing me to converse and whatnot. But, you know, the job is pretty much done. We should perhaps see if there's anything dangerous left in this town. And then we can bring Julius and the bodies back to Santa Vaughan. And he can be interrogated. Sorry, and I sort of look at him when I say that. (laughs) Robbie John is just kind of following along, not really saying anything. She looks kind of like stiff and annoyed or angry. Mm, discomfort is rife. <laughs> what do you say we have a look around, friends? Very well. So you guys are searching the building? You're searching the town? What are you searching? I guess Basil, in particular, would just go to the, the back door I like talked about, kick it open, see what is in there or out there. If it just leads outside, then he will just scale some remain of a building <laughs> and try and get a look at the town and just sort of see if there's anything else that looks kind of dangerous. You know what I mean? A lurch, a death knight. To us! <laughs> dangerous to us! <laughs> see an entire group of people who used to be people who are now skeletons. There's a grise. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he's not super in, uh, invested in spending much too much time looking for something he just kind of wants to you know if there's like dying children we could maybe help them because the children you know something like that uh what do you guys think about that uh, as you come out the back door you do see it's more of a destroyed town you see smoke rising uh, there's no more people leaving they've all died or left uh but you do see a almost like storm cellar to your left about 20 feet you should perhaps take a look i'll walk over I guess I'll just kick it open, because I have, like, a lot of strength. Can I try and kick it open? Yeah, you can try and make a roll. Athletics? Sure. Storm cellars open out, but I'm going to kick it open. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, just going to smash them. Oh, credit for 33. So you shatter the door, and wood goes flying and, flying and splintering. You find a research station. It looks like a bunch of research went down. It's a laboratory. There's a mix of arcane and occult going on down here. There are tomes... There are tapestries. I think. Barking pug. Tunelius, I think. I think you might want to see this. It looks like the kind of thing you'd be interested in. Oh, excellent. I look at it. I cast. <laughs> I cast detect magic first before I 
go anywhere near anything in there. Some of the arcane symbols on the ground and some of the occult symbols on the ground look like they are are set up for summoning and or transportation. Everything right. else looks like material. Well, I will investigate it all thoroughly. Go ahead and give me one investigation roll at advantage. 41. <laughs> a 41 investigation. I have a 22 on your investigation score. You don't see anything. It's all legit. I've checked this character out like a hundred times. He sees the like the letters from the Matrix, the green letters on the screen. That's what he looks at. And using that Matrix vision, you look around and you see that there's a lot of experiments. And there's lab notes. Uh, there's some tapestries that display Orcus uh, being revived. There's tapestries that display Abel. And there's tapestries that display previous iterations of the Defenders. Let me know what you want more details on first. Oh, and there's a lot of oh. research notes, so you can know about all the experiments they were doing. Yeah, I take all of those. What um, do you want me to expound upon first? Well, I don't... The Orca stuff, I can I can worry about that later, because the cult is basically done now. So I'm not worried about that. What about Abel and the other versions of us? All right. So the tapestry shows Abel... Shows Abel using the trio of power to summon a being, a mighty being. And that tapestry is to the left of the Orcus tapestry. Uh, set conspicuously to show that possibly Abel's trying to summon Orcus. But there's no hard data with that. There's insinuations there. It also shows, uh, it shows him standing over the bodies of a lot of people. And it also shows Abel's form. What's the best way to describe it in game? So Abel typically looks like a very handsome elf. Kind of human, human, maybe elf kind of could go either way, like possibly a half. Elf. You're never quite sure what the hell he is, but he's very handsome. Dark hair, a twink. paler, paler skin. I'm not going to even acknowledge you, Joe. Paler skin, <laughs> but very flawless, dressed well. And he, he looks like uh, this looks like a, do I say corrupted, alternate, nightmarish kind of form? It looks, it doesn't look like demon or devilish, it looks otherworldly. The alien description was very accurate. Lovecraftian. Okay. Kind of Lovecraftian. So we're talking the little tentacle tea things and, you know, maybe the painting kind of, or the tapestry kind of at the corner of your eyes plays effects on you and, like, you, you look because you think you see something in the corner of the tapestry and you don't. I mean, we did see the sort of tentacly spooky form of Abel over the inn when, like, four years ago. So you've already Is seen this... evidence of evil. You know, the tentacles aren't inherently evil, Ricky. Okay, some people quite like them. <laughs> so, is this Bizarro Abel? <laughs> I'm helping! <laughs> Alright, uh, so that's the tapestries. And then what else, what would you like me to talk about next? I'm sorry. Rick. We have to go over the list again. There were the tapestries, there's a research note. Crap, what else do I have here? What else did you notice? The other iterations of ourselves. Oh, uh, you see, it just seems like they're, it's almost like it's a tapestry of collected group photos, right? Or group paintings. There's about seven of them. And each version of the Defenders looks pretty much the same, a little different. In one of them, there's no Roland. In another one, Roland's a, a Fearbog or whatever. The giant, the half giant, you know what I mean? Fearbog. Mm. The only thing that doesn't change throughout are the only the only people who don't change throughout the models. Rabbi Jan's always Rabbi Jan, always dressed the same, no no variants in features, nothing like that. And Fenelius always looks under and uninterested, and being <laughs> in a painting, no matter what race he is, it's always easy to pick out Fenelius. You guys turn it into kind of a game. It's like oh look at this gnome who doesn't give a crap about any of this. That's Fenelius, <laughs> but it just looks like different versions of you like they've started to come across this weird timey wimey theory as well and they've started to gather records of of the iterations of you almost like they're studying the defenders or they were until they is there a timeline where ren has a gun no no i'm never gonna let ren have a gun there is a there's a version of ren that's a luxodian whatever the uh elephant luxodon luxodon yeah yeah a luxodon even yeah yeah those are cool but but robbie john never changes never well, that's no fun. 
Always that probably haircut. explains why Abel likes Robijon because it's, it feels like he's spending eternity with her. All right, pause. He's like grooming. I don't like it. <laughs> it Listen here, you little son of a bitch. Stay <laughs> with my notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, it just makes sense that he's very protective of her because, like, you know. That's and interesting. Is he only... And the sea of mass chaos, there's only one constant. Yeah, Ravi And it's a cat that's hungry. But again, this is this timeline has happened thousands and thousands of times, and this is seven pictures. So there's something unique about these seven. Or there's not. It could just be random. I could just be making it up as I talk. You don't know. I feel like maybe we know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, so the occult, uh, the, 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 when you look at the occult circles, give me. go ahead and give me. No, you got a 41. It's fine. Uh, that's legendary. They are trying to summon demons here. I very carefully copy all of the, all of the runes and the orders and everything down in one of my notebooks. Hmm. And you then, have an interest in summoning demons, do you? Well, I have an interest in all kinds of summoning and portals. And then I destroy the portal, the runes. And then the arcane runes are teleportation circles. They recognize them. They're based roughly off your mom's design. Hmm. Where do they go? You got a 41. Uh, this one goes back to... I was going to say, roll it again! But no, you got a damn 41. You get everything. Uh, this one goes back to the castle that uh, Gravine sacrificed. Okay. Well, I copy it down. Cool. So that gives you... If you want to, you can set up a teleportation spot to here or to the castle now. Or both. Or neither. Yeah. Oh. All that's left is the notes for experiments. Isn't the castle basically like Chernobyl now? Like everything in like a 20 mile radius? It's all necrotic still from Grise. Um, if you're a listener from Chernobyl, we don't mean to insult your home. But yeah, no, it's totally. <laughs> We're talking about the reactor. Oh, no, I was talking about the destroyed town with mutant animals. Yeah. But it's 100% like that. Uh, it's, it's weird because there's these things that exist where something traumatic will leave a residual effect. You see this with, like, ancient dragons, right? Near their lair, they begin to enhance the laws of physics near their lair. So a fire dragon, it might become hotter. You know, there might be more lightning storms near, like, a blue dragon. And the swamp might get a little more vicious near a black dragon, right? They, they influence the, the terrain within miles of their, of their home. Um, the terrain is slowly being changed by the effects of the sacrifice, right? There's no life. There's no plants growing near there. Animals have moved out for a couple of miles around there. And things happen to people who stay there too long, right? Like, the, it's just nobody, it's just weird. It feels toxic and one might say necrotic to stay near that castle right now. Mm. I'm going to assume that one of Finn's clones is probably up there studying it. That's fair. Yeah, it seems like something you'd be totally into because it's rare. It's the rarest of rarities. <laughs> to have access and knowledge of when a lich did the thing, like that's, that never happens. So uh, all that's left is the research notes. And I will message you the results of the research notes to leave suspense for the other players and the listeners at home. Sounds good. I don't think it sounds good. <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. Do you have any questions about that message, Rick? No, I like it. It's very interesting stuff. And there's a lot of detail on what they did and how they did it. So uh, everything was documented. They had very good scientists working on this. Their notes impressed you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> that, that information will be important later. Well, Onyx asked earlier, but I figure, do, do the tapestries look reminiscent of Basil's art style? No, this is not your artwork, Basil. Stop trying to be the okay. only artist in the world. <laughs> what the heck? But one of Basil's alter selves could have been working for the other side. Because, oh, you know, true. Yeah, so that's why I was curious about that. That's a good yeah. point. I didn't you guys that. don't know if any of your previous incarnations were evil. Well, I guess one of my family in the cult. Hundred percent, Gravine was evil at some point in time in his past. Mm. Or present. I'm gonna say this: Ren was never evil, but was always an asshole. <laughs> was Robbie John evil? It is Robbie John. That's not what I asked, Ricky. Well, Robbie John in every one of those was a. Uh member of the Defenders, so I think the chances of Robijon having been equal were... Uh, are the Defenders worse. always a good thing? There's bad guilds. Nah. So, uh, you've checked it out. Are you guys going to do anything else in this basement? 
I mean, Basil probably would have let Finn go in and then gone off to look at some other stuff and then come back. So I guess he'd be like, you're done, Finn. Yeah, there's two or three hours that Finn's been here writing down all these things, doing all this stuff. Onyx is still standing there with both the bodies on his shoulders, just standing there. <laughs> well, they're starting to sag. Oh, we should have we should have told Gry that everything was okay. It's been hours. <laughs> he, uh, uh, I guess if we're done, if Finn's done with the notes, and we don't notice anything else worth investigating, we go get Gry and go home. Take my dad home. Private John is okay with that plan. So don't want to check out parents' bedrooms. Well, I, I don't know where that would be. I I, I said we kind of look around, but I don't know where. I figure if we don't notice anything. And we just don't know where it is. So you guys leaving? How are you leaving? Well, I guess we'll go find Grind and then... Okay, you can go find Grind and then silence. Uh, hey, Grind. But... Hey, Grind. We... You use Cypher Grind Finn's teleportation magic. Our teleport lords, lords of the teleported realm. Oh, that's definitely Finn. That's yeah, definitely. I can teleport. Yeah, then you can get us home, right? Absolutely. Okay, let's go grab Grind and go home. I mean, is there anything else you guys want to uh, have a look around? I don't, I don't know if there's much else for us to do here. I'm assuming a lot of the cult plans and whatnot were in that basement, Finn. Yeah, for all intents and purposes. No, because there is another finger, right? Because Gry said that we have to learn about another finger from our parents. Am I misremembering? Are you misremembering? Am I misremembering? Finn! <laughs> don't ask me to remember. check your purpose. I feel, I feel, I, I feel like I remember, hang on, let me check my notes. It says, um, we get there, we need to speak to two individuals, uh, who may tell us where the final finger is. I don't I'm know. I'm kind of assuming that my mom and my dad kind of just count as one, you know what I mean? So there's still someone else, right? Because the two people were Abjura and Julius. Is that true? That, I think, maybe, I don't, I don't know if it's referring to Cleo or not. Why well, he's not going to talk to me? He hates me. Julia. <laughs> I guess while I'm like going off, I'll, I'll, when I, like at some point when I've gone off, like looking around the town, I'll ask him and I go, Julius, I'll, like sit him down. He doesn't, Does he, like, he doesn't, he sits there and just keeps staring past everybody. He's not, he's not looking at anybody. Julius, I need you to tell us if there's any fingers of the cult left. It's important. You must understand if I don't find them, Gravine will. You could be saving a life. Is there anyone left? Would you at least like to pick a more appropriate final thing to say to your son before you're taken away? Very well then. And I'll pick him back up and keep on doing whatever I was doing. Basil doesn't seem like upset, I guess. He does sort of let out like a... <sighs> not frustrated, but sort of tired sigh. Uh, and he, yeah, he'll continue going about doing what he's doing and then he gets back. He'll be like... Well, I wasn't able to ascertain from Julius whether or not there are any remaining fingers of the cult. So I suppose if we still have time, we can leave that investigation uh, in the capable hands of Gravine. Perhaps it would be better to have a little bit more involvement this time, as a lot of children-sized skeletons around here is kind of not great. Not a fan of that. Uh, the halflings? Yes, um... But the point is, I can't really tell if the children are halflings. You know, because all their flesh is missing. They're halflings, right? I don't know if all of them are. I don't know. I do not know. Right. Either way, we should probably go. I agree. Perhaps there's more information we can gather from Julius once we get back home. He's not interested in talking to me. So then you guys are heading home? You go back and collect the vine and head home? I guess so. I don't really know what else there is for us to do here. Probably John's not really sure she wants to collect Gravine, but she's just going to follow everybody as they do what they will. Hey guys, you guys okay? How'd it go? No fighting. I gesture to the two dead bodies being held by Onyx. I mean, you know how it is. Everybody handles things different. Teach their own. Yeah, they took their own lives. Why? They'd rather kill themselves than answer for their crimes. Yeah. Depending on who's doing the answer, that's rough. Perhaps. He kind of looks briefly, almost distant, like in a TV movie. Like he would come. And you can kind of hear him, and his voice changes a little, and he goes, Yeah, we've all got crimes. 
Go out there and get answer for something. I think that's all right. I suppose for now we just do what we must. So we're done. We're done here. I think so. We found a laboratory of theirs, and Julius won't tell me if there's another finger lurking about somewhere. He's not dead, by the way. He's just sort of catatonic. It's the problem with the whole Supposedly. But I suppose no extra information could hurt. Well, if we're done here... He claps his hands like this. And the army of skeleton and zombies start to dig themselves graves. Lay down. Kind of cover, cover themselves with dirt. You feel like magical energy is dissipating. You've commanded them to rest. Yeah. I mean, none, none of those, those people, people had... None, none of those, those were animated by souls. In the I don't, I don't like, like that type of necromancy. I actually find against it. I've only got a few that I do that to. But, uh, uh, yeah, I was done with their bodies. And even though it's nothing to do with the essence of who the people were, I think it's fair that they get their rest. That's awfully reassuring. It's not the best graves, but they dug their own. In life and in death. We should figure out with the guild what to do with this place. It'd be a shame if it went to total waste. Uh, honestly, we, there's, there's a lot of refugees from a lot of the cult stuff who could probably spend some resources uh, and help them establish here. It's going to be a little creepy for them for a little while, so we should probably see if we can get some help. Ron is quite expert in rehabilitating broken towns. He's quite experienced with that sort of thing. It's quite impressive. So, all right, yes, then let's let's um, head home and figure this out. Uh, you come back to Centervale. You go through a portal. Uh, it doesn't matter whose portal, but you go through the portal and get back to Centervale. And it's quiet. It's very quiet in Centervale. You see any people? Uh, I mean, not a lot. It's a little bit towards the evening. The people are doing their evening things, but a lot of people settle down. Not a lot of chaos. There's nobody screaming, but it's awfully quiet. The peace is quite nice. Yeah, peace. That's it. Yeah, peace to the distance. Well, I guess we would have gone straight back to the guild. Yeah, Rabbi John thinks that would be the first thing on the list, yes. Yeah, I guess, yeah, we, we head back to the inn. I want to try and find Nina. Right, Nina's in the inn drinking, as always. Nina, my apologies for interrupting your drink again. Look what you do. Have you heard from the sage recently? Nope. Do you have any way of contacting him? He's always complaining, don't drink as much, it'll cut your lifespan, be happy. You should wake up early and do some meditation. I'm so tired of him. Ugh, well, what do you want him for? I sort of shake the man on my shoulder. My, my, this is my dad. Julius. Yes. He, well. It's been a we, long time. So that's your dad? Yeah, well, apparently, that's what he says. I just kind of wanted to ask the, the sage about that, if that, you know. He's still staring at me. She looks at him in the eyes and goes, How's Cleo? Nina. Yeah? I point over my other shoulder at, at Onyx. <laughs> oh, you guys should have opened up with that. Yeah, pro yeah, probably, actually, yes. That would have been a good start. I didn't, I hadn't realized that you were familiar, but I, in retrospect. So Nina goes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can to reach out to him. I'll get him here as soon as I can. I, I would try and contact him um, myself, but it's been a while since I've spoken to him. So... Killing parents now, huh? I didn't kill her. She, Abjura and Cleo, drank poison. I was hoping to bring them back. The other one. I point at Onyx again. Who's that? I look at Rabajan. <laughs> What's... Rabajan, is that... Is that somebody close to you? No. Is that worse because it's not somebody close to you? Rabajan does not know who this person was, but they claimed to be Rabajan's father. I mean, to be fair, more coverage back it up. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't know that. She doesn't need to. <laughs> Alright, so here's where we are. You guys are going to imprison the two dead people and the alive person. You guys are going to try to reach out. You're reaching out to the Great Sage. You also, I'm assuming, want information about where the Beholden are. Uh, and you want to know about, you want to interrogate one more time uh, your non non uh, helpful pops. Yeah. Basil's assuming maybe there's some magic that can help with that sort of interrogation. He doesn't know, he's not he's not a magic user, but he would think that there probably is some stuff that some people can do. Dunno. Maybe can we can I turn to I guess Finn, but also Nina, and I say, Do you think perhaps we could borrow chain? Uh spring water. 
what? You want him involved on purpose? I sort of look at the man that I'm carrying over my shoulder, and I say, I don't suppose that I want him involved, but I do think that it is necessary. We're going to go ahead and end the episode there. Thanks for coming along and, and, and listening to us play some Dungeons and Dragons. We hope you had a good time. And join us next time with Defenders of the Veil vale as we try to find dragons this way. Hi, this is Mallory. I do the voice of Rob John, and I wanted to say thank you for joining us for another episode of Defenders of the Veil. Vale. If you would like to hear more of Defenders of the Veil, vale, you can find us at Podbean, Spotify, iTunes, and pretty much anything else that plays podcasts. You can also find us on Twitter at Defenders Veil vale and Facebook, uh, Defenders of the Veil. Vale. Our episodes come out weekly, and we would love for you to share us with your friends. We hope that you will join us again soon. Thanks again. Okay, so Robbie John's first question was, is Abjura really her father? And Freya came back and said, the results for your paternity test came in, and Abjura is your father. Wow! What? Wow! He starts jumping. He's jumping on the chair. I told you. I told you so. I told you. <laughs> yes, I, I'm i sure I didn't come across as more Povich as I wanted to, but I tried. <laughs> it's perfect. This feline comes comes strolling up to you and it, it circles around you, kind of, you know, cats do that weird in between the legs figure eight thing when they're trying to knock you over and kill you. Everybody can see this cat coming in. And the cat comes over and it kind of flops like cats do on its side and it's like looking at you like, pet me asshole. Um, Bobby John doesn't want to pet anybody in that area no i didn't say pet mine it said pet me you were the ass you were that area in this scenario but we don't know if that pet cat is a pirate or not our pet me asshole okay. well this just got really <laughs> weird okay <laughs> I, I i want to hate that but the setup and then the follow-up the spike from the smallest person in the group was the best well you guys have met my husband so you guys Come have anything on, on. his bodies before i uh Throw them over my shoulder. Bro, you just go loop my mom. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, point. he's just offering it to somebody else. Okay. That's Rob, a good point. Robbie John is going to strongly <laughs> consider it, but she's going to pass. Well, if you do not want to loot it, I would loot it for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes. So, can, can you roll on red sheet to loot them? Because <laughs> he totally would. <laughs> I'm oh, just going to slide in here and... Uh... This is what happens when you miss a session that's super important, like this one. Yeah, you get used as a loop monkey. <laughs> You're the scapegoat for the session. Well, I'm, I'm a white guy, so I can't call anybody a monkey. That's weird. But... <laughs> yeah, I can't know. <laughs> that... <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, Rin got a 30 investigation. Woo! He was higher than Ruby's here. Episode. <laughs> he has a plus 15 on investigation listeners i just want you to know that he knows where you are he knows your exact location at all times and he is on his way i see you when you're sleeping uh, so you wonder why joe's not in these sessions it's because he's, he's coming to find you um, oh jeez. i don't think we should loot my dad because you know he's kind of still alive and that'd be kind of weird he's already not wearing a lot of clothes don't worry walter's not here <laughs> Safe Sorry. From the wall, huh? <laughs> so you're saying that they're good because of their color? <laughs> this is a weird angle. Take with me, Ricky. For the audience, I just accuse a black man <laughs> of being a dragon racist. <laughs> 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 I have had that ready. I've had that ready for a couple weeks now. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right, so Rabbi Jan and Basil, mm -hmm. you guys have inspiration for this interaction. Oh, heck yeah. So now, now we, um... This is like, this is like when my dogs died and my dad gave me 20 quid. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm not gonna defend, but he he did something. 
I did. I, did. I actually did appreciate it. <laughs> it was just really funny. You. No idea what to do. Uh, yeah. Uh, here you go, mate. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's from Africa, so he doesn't sound like that. Uh, was he? He's like um. Do, do, um, do, do an impression of your dad. So my name is Saul, and when he would like call him, he'd be like Saul. <laughs> Saul. <laughs> he summoned you from another room to give you twenty quid. <laughs> yeah. Sa- yeah. Sa- <laughs> your dogs. <laughs> your dog. <laughs> It's your, dog, it's your dog food. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. And on that very sad note, let's take a quick break and come back, grab water. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go drink. Snacky poos, run to the boys' room, smoke. All at the same time. Yeah. I like to involve all my orifices when I'm in the bathroom. Don't I'll, cl- smoke I'll clean in my the ears. Room, don't you know? I'll clean my ears, blow my nose, pick a tooth out. Hey, I don't need them all. Right. A whole right. fucking tooth, Ricky? You probably don't need them all. I don't need, need one. one. need one. It's for opening cans. Okay, I'm leaving. Yeah, for all intents and purposes. For all intents and purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I've discovered that one of my purposes in life is to make Ron chew his lip and hate me. One of your intensive purposes. My intensive purpose is primarily to frustrate Ron by saying things like poison snakes, y'all, and ain't. To be fair, D and D itself refers to snakes to as poisonous. Fair. Okay, all right, that's a lot. I didn't mean to drop that. Well, calm down. Don't. Th- you're not supposed to- <laughs> what are you oh, throwing? This is, this is just a bottle. This is a Coca Cola glass, Pepsi right. bottle. <laughs> uh... Shit, I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, you said all intensive purposes. Yeah, oh, you yeah, can. The gone. You can both just oh. fuck right off. And I can edit that out. <laughs> With a very intensive purpose, he will edit that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. space when he's deleting. Wow. Ron is really going no holes barred. Yeah. You can't hold the bards. They hold back. <laughs> exactly. Uh, That's yeah, why like... I go no holes barred. So they'll come back. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. We moved into the same square at the same time. He he, he caresses your cheek passionately. <laughs> like, Sorry, Rabajan. <laughs> Looks like you got two dads now. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, Rabajan can't handle two dads. Just got one. It's too much already. <laughs> Almost like they're studying the defenders, or they were until they. Is there a timeline where Rin has a gun? No. No, I'm never going to let Red have a gun. <laughs> That's never a good idea. <laughs> You'd be unstoppable. You'd be unstoppable. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> but you're the little friend, Ren. And then Rabbit Jan also offered to give everybody her snacks for the rest of eternity so she wouldn't have any more. Um, no. Forever. No more snacks. Your gnome no longer works for you. No. No. Yeah, yeah, no. Correct. We're talking about that one. No. Ma. <laughs> no. Ma. Rabbi Jan, we have an opportunity for you to lose disadvantage for the rest of the game. Uh oh. Okay. All you have to do is, in the correct order, ask me those three questions again. Well, the first question that Rabbi Jan asked Freya was if the if if the tabaxi at the table was actually her father. Do you remember the tabaxi at the table's name? Abdura. As I said, I'm pretty sure you came up with the name, so it should yeah. be. <laughs> right, um, cool. What was the second one? One for the 33% Rabbi Jan, 66.6 repeating percent away from victory and less disadvantage than you were going to have. <clears throat> uh, um, the second question was, did the cult get what they deserve or deserve what they got? Rabbi Jan, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but this is basically, you're down to the million dollar question. At this point in time, you have no lifelines, no ability to ask anybody for help. It's get this and no disadvantage, or don't get this and good luck, especially as a healer. The third question Rabbi Jan asked Freya was if her and her friends at the guild had been used to do Abel's ill will, evil bidding, etc., etc. Now, before I let you know how bad you did, uh, with that last question. Do you want to commit to that being the last question? You're awful. The last question could be something about snacks. 
Grab your hand. You got you have five seconds to decide if that's your final answer for the last question, or if you'd like to change it to something more accurate. I think more accurate, accurately, Robbie John asked if Mr. Abel Geyser was evil or bad. So your final question, let me make sure I'm understanding what you're saying right. Is <laughs> is Mr. Abel Sir evil or bad? Not those exact words, but that was a sentiment from it, yes. Oh, you were right before you changed it. <laughs> that question was spot on. Is Abel using the guild for his evil gains? Gainsable. See, that's why you never change your answer on a test. You're what the hell, right. Ricky? Why are you doing me like that? Every single game, you've got to <laughs> just stab me with something. Stab, I was stab, stab. more convinced <laughs> that I was going to come to Wisconsin first to visit you guys, but I'm a little scared right now. <laughs> As you should be. <laughs> They're going to combo attack you. I'm just going to not tell her I'm showing up. I'm just going to be there on the last day, Ron, and I'll show up for dinner or something. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's going on? All right, I'm out. Let's go. Bye. To the plane. Yeah. I, right, you so. forget. You sent me your address. Walter will find you. I'm not scared of Walter. I like Walter. He's safe. Uh, no. He's going to be the one who he tells he's in town. Hey, Walter, come come out and hang with me. Yeah. Walter, we're going to have some beers at Ron. And then, and then some pictures will turn up on Facebook of me, Ron, and Walter having a good time. And you'll be like, wait a minute. Tiny Fury and Insurance. It's not a gold one, so he's safe from Walter. Yeah, word. Now, I think of the two of us, Walter is the scary one. You just have always met him in a fun setting. It's because I'm a fun guy. I'm very mushroom-like. The third question that Robbie John asked had to do with is Mr. Abel Geyser using the guild for his evil gains? And uh, Lady Freya came back with this clear as a bell answer. Abel is the uncomprehensible one. His will is his own. Sometimes good, sometimes evil. Concepts he seems to have no understanding of. I'm just saying, you put a lot of sass in your tone right there. Yeah, Robbie John doesn't think that's a straight answer, and she feels a little gypped, a little bit gypped out of that one. So Would you like gypped. to put your hair back and ask uh, Freya for a refund? No. Oh, Karen John. <laughs> you know, we've determined that that was a lie. <laughs> no. No, Robbie John is going to take it as it is, get one straight answer, scolded, and then, you know, maybe, it, you know, we know what we're talking about. Maybe we don't. Two and a half straight answers. You got two and a half straight answers. That's very good. Just because you got scolded and didn't like one of them doesn't mean it wasn't a straight answer. <laughs> don't be pouty. I'll put you in timeout next to Basil. <laughs> <laughs> I moved myself back. Wow, wow, were you moving back to the corner? No, I'm going back. Um... I'm sorry, when did Basil call my character Karen John? Let's not. Let's not. <laughs> Basil, uh, it's all uh, Let's not worry about that. I might be a little worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> Them <laughs> fighting words. So, uh, 